Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for physics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from Exam Guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Post UTME, YEC, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Kabupedia, BECE. JSCE, NCEE, NACO ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell and get updated on new videos. Are you ready for this class? Okay, let's get started. Welcome to physics class and today we want to look at electricity part two. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define potential difference, resistance, electromotive force, EMF, current, voltage drop, and internal resistance. Then number two, you should be able to state Ohm's law and explain cell arrangement. And four, define resistivity and solve relevant problems. If you are ready for this class, let's get started. Now, when you talk about electricity, we are talking about the quantity of charge that flows past a given point in a second. So that is electricity. That means that the current is equal to Q over T. That is what electricity is all about, where the quantity is measured in Coulomb and the T is measured in time. And that means whenever we are talking about current, we are talking about something that is in motion. All right? So like I said earlier, if we have a moving news. We say that it's current news. But if the news is not trending, so it's not going to be current. So when we are talking about current, we are talking about what is in motion. For example, we talk about water current because there is a steady flow of the water from a given source. So whenever the word electric current comes to play, know that there, is a, there are quantity of charges that are in continuous motion. And based on what you're watching on the screen, you see that when a circuit is closed, that this particular, um, this like thing is showing the movement of the charge. And the charge moves past a given point, And as it is going, it is powering the load to be able to be in the circuit. And then there are different arrangements, as the case may be. Now, when we talk about electromotive force, and we are going to use electromotive force, a lot of them, in this lesson on previous or also other lessons coming. We now say that EMF, 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 and this is given as electromotive force. We said that this electromotive force is the total work done in driving one quantity of electricity around a circuit. So, you know, every battery or every cell has on this its body a value of voltage. That value of voltage is what is called the EMF. So the EMF is just when it is not delivering um, current to the standard circuit. But when that particular battery or ba that particular cell is in work, some percentage of voltage will be lost, which is called the voltage loss, which we are going to also look at then the total value the manufacturer has given that your battery is the EMF. Let me give for example. If you have a cell phone, and that's your cell phone, the manufacturer says it is 5,000 5, battery capacity. If it has 5,000 battery capacity, then when you charge it, it's fully charged to 100%, it's going to give you 5,000 the battery capacity. But when you now own it, you now start playing some videos, you start making some call, or you are connected to the internet, what happens? You now realize that a particular amount of the battery will be reduced. So that 100% is no longer going to be there. Why? Because the battery is not working. It's powering so many apps in the phone. And those apps in the phone are getting on, driving or drawing some energy from the battery. So the 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 battery drops, as the case may be. But if you charge it 100% and you keep it, you are not using it, it's going to remain 5,000 
battery capacity. So when we talk about EMF of a cell or EMF itself, we are talking about the total work done being able to drive a quantity of charge around a closed circuit. But most of the times, we consider it when it is not delivering um, current to the standard circuit. However, the EMF of a force is different from EMF of a cell. Electromotive force is different from the electromotive force of a cell. Now, when we talk about the potential difference, we are talking about, you say, between any two points, because when we are talking about potential difference, we consider two points. For example, if you have a resistor connected here and then another resistor connected here. So there is a point here and there is a point. This point, we call it maybe junctions. So between this point A to point B, what is the voltage across these two ends? The, the potential difference at this level must not be the same potential difference at this level. They are different. But the change in the potential difference across these two is what voltage is all about, which is V2 minus V1 is what is called voltage. Now the question is, what is this potential difference? You said that potential difference between any two points is the work done. Is the work done, is the work done in moving a unit charge. That means in moving one <coughs> column of charge from this point A to another point B in a closed circuit. So there must be a work done. Because if there is no uh, work done, that is the energy supplied by the battery, in pushing the quantity of charge from this point to this point, then we are not going to have what is called voltage. Because when we talk about voltage, which is the last thing we are going to define there, we are talking about it is the change in the potential difference between two points. Change in the potential difference between two points. If, for example, the potential difference at this point A is given as VA, and the one at point B is given as VB. So what is going to be the voltage? Voltage is just the difference between the potential at this point and the potential at this point. So that is what voltage is all about. And according to Ohm's law, like we know, voltage is given as IR. In the next lesson, or in the, sec in the lesson titled Circuit Analysis, you can look for it it is going to be treating the application of all this in a circuit. And that is why it is titled circuit analysis. Now, when we talk about resistance and current, what is resistance? Resistance is the opposition to the flow of current or electric current. Why current is the time rate of the movement of the charge. Like I have said before, this resistance is just a load in a circuit, like each of them. And they are the essence why we have a circuit. If there is no load or resistance connected in the circuit, we say that the circuit is a short circuit. However, each of these resistances, are, they are the ones that draw energy from the battery. They are the ones that take some quantity of charge, which leads to a drop in the, the, the voltage or the EMF of a battery. So it is given there as a definition, as you can see. Now, we have different types of resistors. We have the one we call fixed resistors, and we have the one we call variable resistors. Now, look at the one we call fixed resistor. These ones are called fixed resistors. Look at them. In our previous class in Electricity 1, we talked about the symbols for representing a resistor. This one or these ones are the symbols we can use to represent a resistor in the laboratory or in the book. Remember, most of the things I keep saying in this lesson is that what you see in a real life is not the same thing in the book. Honestly, book is very deceptive. But in real life, in some of your electronical appliances, the resistor you are going to see is this one with a lot of color codes on the body. And each of this, the value of this resistor is represented by these color codes on the color on the on the body of the resistor. So that is not what we are going to talk about today because it's really beyond the scope of this lesson. Because when we go into electro ele electronics, we are now going to be talking about how to calculate the value of a resistor. Like if you go to some industries, maybe you go to a technician. If you have a problem with your television, or probably there is no 
well passage of or charts or one problem or the other. When you take them to that place, we then measure the value of this resistor. And for you to be able to put a relevant resistor there, you should know the color code. And the color code is what gives you the value of the resistor in, a, in an industry. But for the sake of your book, this is what they are. And their values are fixed. For example, we can have 5 ohm resistor or 2 ohm resistor. Sometimes we can have 5 micro ohm or milli ohm. Remember what I mean by macro ohm? Uh, like macro 10 raised to the power minus 6 ohm. Remember? Which is a very, very small value of the ohms or resistor. Or we can have milli ohm, which is 10 raised to the power minus 3 ohms. So these are what we call by the fixed resistors. Now look at this one here. People say that this is used to change the current in a circuit. They are not lying because whenever you change the resistor, you will also change the current. So this one you are having here, what you are having here is as you are moving this slide on, what is going on? You are increasing the resistor because look at this, look at this wire here. That wire is making contact with each of these wires. And remember, all these resistors you are talking about, they are just wire. Because every wire has a given resistor. It's going to pose in a circuit. So each of these contacts, making on the contact, look at the contact there, they are bringing more resistance to the circuit. And as a result of that, current will be changed. Now, look at this one, my favorite, which is called the resistance box. You use this one in laboratory to change or vary the resistance in a circuit. Now, if you look at these values here, maybe they may not be very clear. If you look at them very well, you will see the value of the resistors. And each time you remove one of these plug, you introduce that resistor into the circuit. So you can also check more of these videos for that and, and our practicals. Now, well, let's talk about the voltage drop and internal resistance. Internal resistance of a cell is given as small r is the opposition to current flow offered by the chemicals between the poles of the cell. What I mean is, when we are talking about internal resistance, it is found inside the battery. Remember, there are some batteries that can power a car. There are some batteries that can power your television. Those kind of batteries that can give out a lot of energy or, let's say, a lot of voltage, they are the kind of battery that have a very small internal resistance. Their internal resistance are very small. But when a battery cannot do much, we say that the internal resistance is very high, like the ones we use to power in our touch lights and all these ones, like calculator battery, all those ones, their internal resistance are very high. The higher the internal resistance, the lower the potential difference that will be delivered or the energy that the cell is going to be giving out. And it is this internal resistance that leads to what we call voltage drop. What is voltage drop? The energy lost by the cell. And this voltage drop, look at this one. This is Ohm's law. But then the voltage drop is given as small v is equal to the same current multiplied by the internal resistance. This is called the voltage loss or voltage drop. And then the voltage drop is the voltage lost by the cell while delivering current to the standard circuit or a standard component of the circuit. Now, factors affecting internal resistance of a cell. The larger the separation between electrodes, the higher the internal resistance. See what they mean? You know what I mean by electrodes? The terminals provided for the passage of the charge in a circuit. For example, if this happens to be Let's assume this is a battery and uh, with this pole and this pole. Let's assume that this one is positive pole and this is negative pole. Now, if from here to here is too wide, like this one now, now see, the distance from the positive to the negative electrode, these ones are electrode, then what will happen? Then we now have increase in the internal resistance. But when this one and this one are very close, then we say that the internal resistance is very low. That means this one is going to deliver more voltage and this one is going to deliver 
lower voltage because the higher the internal resistance, the lower the voltage that will be delivered. Then number two is the nature of the electrode. Look at this. This could be zinc, it could be iron, it could be copper. So the nature of those metals used as electrode talks more about their level of conductivity. So the greater conductivity, the less internal resistance. Now, another one, inversely proportional to the area of the electrode. So we say that the internal resistance is inversely proportional to the area of electrode. Yes, we have said that before, because if the electrode, the area of this electrode, like if the area of this electrode is higher, then we are going to have a low resistor, a internal resistance. And then if the electrode is very high, is very low, we are going to have a high internal resistance. Ohm's law, we've talked about Ohm's law. We said that Ohm's law says that, that V, potential difference between the ends of, of, of any circuit is directly proportional to the current delivered, provided that temperature and other physical agents are kept constant. And that has led to this equation here. And that is Ohm's law. Then, in this Ohm's law, there are some, there are some circuits, or should I say, yes, there are some circuits or some metals that obey this law, according to Ohm's law. Now, those metals that obey Ohm's law, we call them ohmic conductors. That means they are obeying the fact that the higher the potential difference, the higher the current. Now, those ones that don't obey the Ohm's law, we call them non-ohmic conductors. Obey Ohm's law, that is, their VI or IV graph are straight lines passing through the origin whose increase in temperature increase in the resistance. So according to your exams, maybe you have exam, well, we are going to have a graph. You are going to have a graph, let's say this graph. You have V and you have current. And when you, when you have this kind of graph and it passes through the origin, you say that this kind of this metal that produces this kind of graph is called ohmic conductors. That means they obey Ohm's law. Or probably also, sometimes if you remove the V and remove the I, we now have that this is I and V. Then we're still going to have this straight line. Passing through the origin, we said that they are called ohmic conductors. Now look at them here. Look at these ones are ohmic conductors. This one is not non-ohmic. Why? Because you are seeing a curve, and this kind of graph, you, it will come back when we'll be talking about semiconductors. You now see what is happening here. This is also ohmic conductor. This one's obey ohmic conductor. These ones are non-ohmic conductor because they are a curve. Resistivity. What is the meaning of resistivity? From the word resistivity, we are talking about the ability of a metal to oppose the flow of current. If you look at this video or this clip, you see some of those color things moving around in this wire. And this particular body can be given as a wire. Remember, we have a very big wire. Some wires are very tiny. Some are very large. And then in your houses, if you want your, your electric iron, your fridge, and some other heavy um, energy consuming appliances to be very effective, then I advise you to use a very strong wire that will not be able to burn as a result of the heat passing through the wire when current is being delivered. However, what we want to look at now is what is resistivity. Before I go into what is resist resistivity as an English definition, I want to first of all consider what scientists have come up with. One, they say that the resistance of a wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire. That means the higher the, the length of the wire, the higher the resistance of the wire. Number two, they say that the resistance of wire is inversely proportional to the area of the cross section of the wire. That means if this is the wire based on the one you are seeing on the screen, look at the area there and look at the area there. Then let me compare it with this one. 
see? Which one has higher circle? The area of this circle is small. Why the area of this circle is higher? Now, according to this, he said that if the area is high, the resistance is going to increase. That means if the circle is big, that means the wire is very thick, like the thickness of this marker, then that the resistance is going to increase. But if the if the wire is like the thickness of this I'm holding, then it's going to reduce the resistance because they are not agreeing. If one is up, one must go down. If the area is high, the resistance will go up. If the resistance goes up, it means that the area will go down. And mathematically, mathematically, when I combine these two, I'm going to use the law of variation. In the law of variation, we said that R is directly proportional to L and inversely proportional to area. So we said that R is equal to, remember, K L all over A, such that this K is a constant called resistivity. So the resistivity is just a constant. It's the nature of the wire or the ability of the wire to be able to pose opposition to the flow of charges in a circuit. So, and that is why, according to the equation, the one you are seeing here, mm -hmm, we say that resistivity, resistance is equal to resistivity times length of the wire divided by the area. Then this is a symbol which is called rho, all right? So it's just a Greek symbol. You can just, nothing, nothing special. So we are going to look at one of the questions on resistivity. He said, calculate the resistivity of a wire of length two meters and a cross and cross-sectional area of 0 0.04 meters cm square if its resistance is three ohms. It looks easy, but not as easy. Now, all you need to do is convert cm, cm square to meter squared. Uh, how does that? Now, I'm going to show you this. We have to go back to our kindergarten because we said that 10, 10 millimeter make one centimeter. You need to know all this. Then 10 centimeter make one decimeter. 10 decimeter make one meter. Okay? I will stop there. Then 1,000 meters make one kilometer. You need to know this. It will help you in the conversion. Com co conversion. Now, look at this one. We have 0 0. Um, 0 0.04 centimeter to meter square. How am I going to do that conversion? First, I'm going to say from centimeter to meter. That means from here, from here to here. How do I get it? One zero and another zero means 100 centimeter will give me one meter. Look at what I did from centimeter, from centimeter all the way to meter. It means ten, one zero and one zero. That's the trick I have. So I have 100 centimeter is equal to one meter. Now look at what happened. Remember that the centimeter has square. I have to square this. I also have to square both sides. When I square both sides, I have not changed anything. So this is 10 raised to the power 2 cm square. All right? So these two, according to law of indices, if I square this, and this is one meter square also, this is going to be 10 raised to the power 4 cm square is equal to one meter square. That means one centimeter square is going to be one over 10 raised to the power 4 meter square. So what do I do? I have made this conclusion that one centimeter square is one over 10 raised to the power 4 meter square. So what will I do? I will go in here. This is 0 0.004 cm square. That means 0 0.004 times 1 cm square. I hope you got that. See, this times this is still this. But what, what should I do? This is 1 cm square 
I will replace this 1 cm square with this in meter square. So I'll have 0 0.004 times 1 all over 10 raised to the power 4 in meter square. You see, it has left centimeter square and it has entered into meter square. So I'm going to have 4 all over 1,000 times. All right, I will write it in standard form for easy calculation. So I'm going to have 4 times 10 raised to the power 1, 2, 3, minus 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 in meter square. All right. So according to law of indices, this is part base 10, base 10. There are powers we add. So this is 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 7 meter square. This is the area. <laughs> this is the unit in, in meter square. But then, what should be the simplest thing to do? Instead of going through all this, maybe you are writing a jam and you, you have a question, what do you do? When you want to convert centimeter square, this is 0, 0.0. Whenever you are converting from centimeter square to meter square, what do you do? Multiply by 10 raised to the power minus 4. Multiply by 10 raised to the power minus 4, and then the thing will enter in meter square. So let's move. So I'm saying that the area is given as 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 7 meter square. That is the area. And then what is the length is given as 2 meters, and the resistance is given as 3 ohms. So what is the resistivity? Remember that resistance is given as resistivity multiplied by length all over area. When I clear the fraction to make resistivity the subject formula. I'm going to have that resistivity is equal to area times resistance divided by L divided by L. Resistivity is RA all over L, which is equal to, I'm going to substitute these parameters to be able to find the resistivity. Resistivity is 3 times area is 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 7 all over length is 2. This is 1.5 because times 10 raised to the power minus 7 times 4. So 1.5 times 4 is 4 plus 2, which is um, 6. So I'm going to have 6.0. So I have that the ohm is equal to 6.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 7. Now, what is the SI unit of the resistivity? I'm going to derive the SI unit of resistivity from this one. Rho is equal to resistance is in ohms times area is meter square and length is in meter. Meter will cancel this. Therefore, resistivity is going to be ohm meter. So this is times 10 raised to the power minus 7 ohm meter. That is the resistivity according to this question. Thank you for being part of this class. But remember, before we go, we are going to take a few more exercises from exam guide app. Let's get started. OK, a thick, a short, thick wire. This is the option, because the wire is short. The resistance is low. And the thickness of the wire means that the, the, the cross-sectional area is also going to be high. So higher cross-sectional area, lower resistor. Short wire, lower resistor. So this is going to be the lowest resistor in a circuit. But look at this, a long wire and a thick wire. No, this cannot be. So that option C is the best option. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the ZAM Guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes, like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that makes learning fun. It is a must-have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video to people that will benefit from it. Bye.